Hey guys, it's Steve with Muse Themes. With the new year approaching and the responsive release coming up, we felt like we've been counting down for a long time. And so we challenged ourselves to build the best countdown widget on the market. Now, countdown widgets in Muse are nothing new. We even have one within the Muse Themes library, but we made one even better from the ground up. So you've got tons of options for how you want it to display. You've got customization for fonts, colors, everything you could possibly think of, and it really just works well. So here's an example on my screen, and on the top we have kind of a circle format for the countdown. Below that we have a text-based one, which we call our standard option. And in this one is just showing a demo of a slightly different circle format where it's actually kind of counting inside the circle and it's just displaying the seconds. So, so you can specify a certain event, an event time, and really kind of drill down to be whatever format you want to see. So let's go ahead and download this widget and load it into Muse. So I'll just click download and let's just click on it and it'll appear in the Muse library panel. And let's drag it out onto the canvas and see what we get. So you'll notice when you download it first, you get two widgets packaged up with this one. We have a circle option and a text option. So the text option is a little bit easier initially to set up. So let me just drag it on the canvas and we'll work with that one first. So you'll notice on this panel, everything is really kind of straightforward for what you'd expect for a countdown widget. To start here, we have our unique ID, which is just using a unique ID will allow you to integrate as many of these as you want on a single page. So there's no limit, just use unique IDs for each one. Now we have our event time. So right now we've just got it set to 2017, January 1st, but you could set this to anything you want. I'm gonna leave it by default set at this. And below that we have the countdown settings. So remember this is our standard countdown widget. So you're going to get just a text display, no circles or anything like that. So we have display alignment and this says center left or right. This is just how to display the numbers within this frame. And you know what, before I even go changing anything, let me just preview this in the browser and show you how it looks out of the box. So there you go, we've got the countdown and we've got all the labels below and we've got kind of some big spacing in between those letters. So let's change the display alignment to left and I'll show you what happens there. So now the countdown is shifted to the left side of the box. Well, a really interesting thing that you can do with this alignment is if we take this frame and we actually scale it down to be really tall and kind of skinny like that, now we preview it in the browser, look what happens. The countdown actually stacks itself in a vertical list. Now in this case, you might want to hide the labels and actually just make them in Muse yourself. So you would just write weeks beside or days, hours, that sort of thing. Jumping back to Muse, let's see what else we can do. So I'm going to bring this back out to be kind of a wide option again. And now let's look at the countdown settings. So we've got count spacing. So that's the kind of gap between each of the counts. So right now it's set at 65. We could drop this down to 30 and that would tighten them up a little bit. We've got the count font size, so it's set at 55. I'll just leave it as is. The count font family. So again, this I've covered in other videos, but you need to actually write the name of the font that's used in the CSS in there. We do have a blog post available explaining this. However, if you're stuck, please send us a note and we can help you out. The count font weight, so right now it's set to bold, but you can leave it set at anything you want. Count color, so obviously this is just the color of the numbers that you're seeing, so let's just change this to orange. And then we have the opacity. So you actually can't can you can't select completely transparent in there. We couldn't do it in terms of the development of this widget. So we did include the ability to set an opacity, which gives you the same control. Okay, so now below that we have the ability to show and hide labels. So labels are things like days, weeks, that sort of thing. So let's just hide them for now. And then what we could do below that is enable or disable specific increments. So let's say our event, which is in 2017, so it's several weeks away, but we don't wanna show weeks. We wanna be counting up strictly using days. So let's disable weeks and let's see what it looks like now. There, so you can see that it's actually just showing 368 days instead of however many weeks we initially specified. So that's the standard version of this widget. And you can do some really nice things with it. As you can see here, we've used or created a little kind of countdown timer to a launch. Now let's dig into another version of this widget that's packaged up with it. In the library panel, let's do the circle countdown clock. Drag that out. So you notice with this one, let me close this, we've got a much bigger panel because it's got a little bit more in terms of options. It starts the same way. We have a unique ID. 
We have the event time, so I'll just leave that set as is. Display alignment, we covered this in the last one, so we'll leave it set at center. Now we have circle style, so we have standard and inner. I'll show you the difference between the two. So for the standard one, I'll preview it in the browser, and you can see that we have the countdown and the circle actually is counting down within itself. So there's a background color and kind of an overlay color. If we change this style and we go to the inner circle, circle style and preview that in the browser, you'll see how it changes. So now we get an outer ring and we actually have the countdown timer within the circle. So this is a really nice effect and you can see that we've used it in our demo here on this second option versus what we did at the top there. So let me go back to the standard option for a moment and I'll cover the options below that in the panel. So we have the circle size, it's set at 150 pixels right now. So of course it's just the size of each of these countdown. I won't bother changing this for now. Now we have circle spacing, that's going to be the gap in between each of the circle countdowns. So let me up this a little bit to 25. And because I'm going a little bit wider, I might need to actually scale my frame up a little bit because if it's too tight, they will stack again, just like the standard one did. Okay, and now we have circle thickness. So right now it's set to 0.1. If we go up to 0.2, you can go really fine increments on this. Let's have a look and see how much thicker it is. So you can see they're a lot kind of chunkier now and you wouldn't want to go up to one or anything like that or it would be absolutely huge. Now you, I suppose you could do that assuming you left enough room between the countdowns and all of that, but that is completely up to you. You have full control over it. So I'm going to drop it down a little bit back to one point or 0.15, just like that. Now the two options below are only available with the standard circle style and they're kind of interesting. So you have circle arc and circle angle. So what the circle arc does is it allows you to specify just a portion of the circle. So right now we're showing the whole circle, but let's change this to be 180. Okay and now preview it in the browser. There, so changing that circle arc actually limits the circle to only be a half circle. Now, of course, I put 180 in there, but you could put 90 or any value you wanted all the way up to 360. So we're showing the half circle. So what does the option below that do? We've got circle arc at 180. Now we've got circle angle. Well, that's gonna control where you want that half circle to be. So right now it was on the right side, but if we add 90 to circle angle, then let's see what happens here. You can see that it actually shifts it, so it's moved 90 degrees, and now it's sitting on the bottom. So you can you have a lot of control over the positioning of these circles, and you can set them wherever you want. I'm doing all sorts of hand movements on my side as I record this to explain it, but basically you have full control over that element. Let me go back and erase the circle arc and the circle angle for now, and let's run through the rest of the options. So we have the circle background color. Right now it's set as white. So we could set this as gray, something like that. The circle background opacity. So let's make it kind of a little bit lighter. That would be about 40%. The count font size, the count color, and the font family. So these are all the same options you had on the other one and I won't bother changing any of these for now. At the end here, we have the label options, so showing and hiding the labels. Let's uh, leave those on for now. We have the ability to enable and disable certain types of the countdown, just like the other widgets, so we could enable days, hours, seconds, that sort of thing. And the last thing here that's actually really important at the bottom is the color. So when I pre preview this in the browser, and let me preview it one more time to show you, you can see that we have kind of a red overlay on this one, blue, green, and in the dark version at the end. So that's what these last colors are controlling. So we could set the days to be something else. Let's change the days to be blue. Let's just set them all to blue, for example. We'll pick a generic blue that's always in the palette, and let's see what we get. There. So you can see the widget is really easy to set up despite the panel being so big, but um, you have a lot of flexibility and control over it. We think that this is the best countdown widget there is available on the market. Uh, our designer mentioned that he couldn't think of anything he couldn't do with it. So I welcome you to try and find something that you can't do with it and let us know. And if you can, we'll gladly integrate it in. Thanks again for watching and best of luck with this widget. Cheers.